So we basically went from this, and you can see what we got here. And I'm going to go ahead and take this off. I'm going to have to take it off anyway. And we ended up with this. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Showing you what you got to do to do this type of work. Now, uh, we had a situation on our outer inner fender well. When I say outer, I'm talking these come in two pieces on the rear. You got this piece here, and then there's another piece inside here, and they seem together right here in spot well. On this piece here, we had a section right here. I want to show you that. You can, uh, if you look real close, you can see where I actually welded it on there, and I made this piece. It was uh, rusted out, and I went ahead and made that to fit in there. And let me show you what it looked like before I made it. And if you look right here, this is the old piece that was on there. Um, this is the piece that was right there just like that. And this was the bottom there where the uh, quarter panel actually spot welded to. You can see where it's missing. So, yeah. I actually made that piece um, and saved the owner considerable lot of money just for that one little section and you can see that's it right there if we so bam it's a done deal but the situation really is is that's how the story goes when you're working on stuff like this uh, I went ahead and applied pour 15 to that because once we put that outer skin on, and you can see I've already got it ready to go, um, I got my flange already around the edge, uh, I cut it already out to fit, and then we're going to be doing some butt welding right here on this edge and around, and then once we get the quarter panel skin onto the vehicle then, we're going to have to come back here and we're going to have to mold all this back in because once again we're working with aftermarket parts and this is basically how it's done. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, you got to be able to fit and form these parts. All right. Um, once again we're not using the whole quarter skin. You can see that. You only use what's necessary. This is not 1972 where you can buy a brand new quarter panel for this if it gets wrecked or rusted. Uh, this is 2018, so I want everybody to think about that in reality. And I'm going to tell you something else. These parts are not getting made any better. They're getting made worse. Uh, this is the only quarter panel that you can even purchase for a 1964-65 so if you were working on a hard top and you had to replace that whole quarter panel, this is the only thing you get is a skin. That's it. And on the 1964-65, there's only one company that makes those drop-down sections, those uh, floor extensions. And that's what you get. That's it. Everything that you do to an old classic car is getting harder and harder and harder to find parts for. It's getting harder and harder to uh, uh, make the parts work, and you just got to get out there and you got to get her done. So before I put this quarter panel on, what I want to do is I want to clear my trunk area out and get everything out of there. 
Uh, you can see all the tools that I use to do this job uh, just to get this thing working properly. Um, I'm telling you that this is no bullshit, this is no joke. This is reality and this is how it's done right here. Don't think that you're going to go out and just buy these parts and throw them together. Uh, one other thing I forgot to show you is there's a factory seam sealer that comes here and then it goes in there and then it also goes down in here and I did replace that. All right, you're not going to weld all this stuff up where all this meets. It will not be welded up solid. You're going to have to seam seal that. That's another thing that people don't realize. They think you're going to buy this stuff and it's just going to fit perfect. It's not. And it's getting harder and harder to find. Once again, I'm going to repeat myself. This is the only place that makes these panels right here. That's the only place that makes them is where we bought them. And that's worldwide. And here is some old seam sealer, just for everybody that doesn't know what seam sealer is. Um, when I took that out of there, of course, it all popped off. Now, we're going to re-seam seal this, but the trunk has to be pour 15 and when I say that we still need to clean the trunk floor up and then we'll put a nice big, uh, vigorous coat of pour 15 on that to kill the rust and seal it up but uh, this is your factory seam sealer and that's what came off of the car when I took this panel off and it was all bundled up in here uh, right there and then down in here so that's real important too to make sure that you seam seal it properly because if you don't all the work you did is going to be a waste of time because what's going to happen is water will shoot up in here when you're driving it or even when you're washing it. It'll come up in here and it'll settle down in here and then bam, you're right back to the same situation you were before you uh, did all this. So we're going to go ahead and install the quarter panel on here. We're going to take a look underneath to show you how everything should line up. Now, once we install this onto the vehicle, this will be a permanent installation, which means that um, we won't be taking it off. I've already pre-fit and test-fitted this thing on here several times, and if we can get this thing in place without me and the body shop girl's help, we should be able to leave it on there and not take it off. So, One more thing about doing these I just want to let you know is um, be very careful when you're putting these on because they're very flimsy and once you do get them on there uh, they will stretch out if you do it right and be nice and strong. But So I'm going to line up my screw holes. This one started here. Once again, I, like I said, I have pre-fit this on here. Everything's already been installed. And now what I'm doing is I'm permanently installing it to the vehicle so I can weld it on. Another thing that's important when you're doing this is to be very careful not to drill a bunch of screw holes. Try to install it using the same screw holes as you can basically see what I'm doing here because that will line it up exactly perfect on how you fit it on there. And that's another important situation in itself is getting it all fit on here properly just like it's supposed to be. And if you fit this on here properly you should have to actually fit it on here using a pry bar to make it a nice snug tight fit. If you've done it properly, that is. And in this situation when you're doing this, it's better really to have somebody to help you hold it in place, but uh, if you've never done it before. Hit the magnetic tips that get that fucking when you put them down on the ground they get metal shavings and slags on them and you can't fucking use them. Okay. So 
you see what's going on here. Uh, we're getting our quarter panel in place, and it's really starting to look good. Let me go ahead and get these screws on. We're going to take a close look at this. take a look at that and I'm going to show you that if you take your time and you precisely fit everything together I'm going to show you how it should turn out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the quarter panel first. Um, if you fit it on here properly you can see that uh, I got a flange underneath there and you can see where the metal is flush mounted. So when I weld that together that's going to be a nice strong secure weld. Um, butt welding and there's a lot of people that are going to uh, disagree with me. Butt welding, to me, when you're doing a panel like this, is the wrong way to do this due to the fact that when you butt weld those together, and you can see here's the flange right here. So when I weld that up and I fill that with weld, it's going to be a nice solid weld. To me, having a flange where there's a piece of steel behind this is going to make that weld a lot stronger. And it's also going to um, reinforce that from warping as much when you are welding it. If you look right here, this is our butt weld. And you can see how precise I cut that. Um, from here all the way around is going to be butt welded because we couldn't use our flange tool on that. But to me, using a flange is a lot stronger and more durability. It's going to last a lot longer. Um, another thing that people leave comments on my videos about, I'm going to tell you, is this uh, bullshit, stupid ass gimmicky crap called uh, weld prime or prime weld or some shit. I never use that stuff. I've never ever used it. I don't believe in it. There is not a chemical out there. Alright, you can spray this with whatever the fuck you want and I'm telling you there's not a chemical out there that will resist the heat of a weld. It will penetrate through whatever your spray whatever you sprayed on there and it will go to the metal and it'll burn the chemical off all right i've tried that shit it doesn't work they sell panels now that have this weld prime crap on them they say it's weld ready blah 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 don't worry about us it's bullshit it's pure fucking bullshit <clears throat> if they made a chemical that would resist 2000 degree heat that would be a very shocking situation and actually penetrate where you're welding it and the chemical is still there protecting it. That's, I mean, think about it. It's stupid. It's one of those gimmicks. It's kind of like that, that metal wash that you buy in the little cork cans to uh, get rid of your rust. That navel jelly and that metal rust shit. It's, it's crap, okay? I'm telling you now. Anyway, let's go ahead and get up under the car and see what we got to do to uh, finish out our quarter panel uh, section and our um, floor extension. So we still got this quarter panel on the car with the floor extension and you can basically see uh, what we're looking at here and what we got to do to make it work. Whereas this one I went ahead and bent that lip out because I'm going to have to form that to fit in there and make it actually work and, and get everything lined up. And you can see just by looking at it that we're going to have to make two bends in this. We're going to have to bend. Let me get that light there. Okay, we're going to have to bend this lip back and then we're going to have to bend this lip out to make that form to that. I can't do that until I actually have the quarter panel secured good enough on the vehicle to, to actually hammer and dolly and bend that in place. But I want you to take a close look at the floor here and you can see by fitting that on there properly you can see where the bottom of this section lines up great with that quarter panel and that's what we're looking at. This is where our spot welds are going to be right here when we pinch that together using our vice grips and it's going to really work out great. So this came out really nice. I still got to spot weld this and this together but I don't want to do that yet until I get this fit inside the quarter panel properly. And once again that's what we got to make it look like. Here's another situation. Look at this quarter panel, the way it fits on here. All right, you can see that corner right there versus this corner right here. So we're going to have to do some hammer and dolling on that as well 
to get that put in place. quarter panel skin is now installed on the vehicle but to finish this job out to make everything come together you might say we got to get this corner in action now this is a pretty common situation when it comes to these aftermarket quarter panels it's usually either going to be too long or too short and I prefer that they're a little bit longer due to this fact right here that we can cut this off we're going to cut this off right here and we're going to move that in. Um, I would rather do that than actually split the corner panel, open it up, and then put a strip in it. So let me show you how to get all this lined up for that uh, floor extension. And that's what this is about. This is not about this quarter panel. It's not about putting this on or how to do it. This video is about that uh, floor pan extension that you saw us where we had to do everything in the previous videos but we're going to finish it out by fitting the quarter panel aftermarket quarter panel to the uh, floor pan extension now if we look at this area right here you can see uh, just by the way that this fits on here right here you can see that it is approximately a half an inch to three quarters of an inch too long so we're going to come back here in this area right here and I'm going to follow this line. I'm going to follow this line, but I'm going to come in approximately an inch. And then I'm going to cut that whole section out. And then what I'll do is I'll move it in. I'll scribe it, cut the excess off. And then I will probably more than likely butt weld this back together. So to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, three-quarter inch tape. This is going to give us a nice straight edge. And once again, I'm going to follow this line, but I'm going to come in approximately an inch. Now, the reason I'm using tape, I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you, is because if I just freehanded that, the cut would be really stupid. And since I'm going to be butt welding these two pieces together, I want to have a nice, clean, uh, straight line to butt it up and next to when I get ready to do that. So we're going to go ahead and take our cutting yeah. wheel, and then we'll go ahead and proceed to cut this off following this side of the line. This side of the line. Remember when you use this tape, Always pay attention which side of the line you're supposed to cut on. And one more thing I want to explain to you. If you're trying to make an exact precise measurement, always remember to uh, compensate for the thickness of the blade. Now by the time you use this blade, this comes out to be uh, a, little, uh, a little under an eighth of an inch. So if I wanted that to be exactly one inch, I would have to compensate for that and I would actually cut it on the tape itself and then follow the line. But since we're uh, pulling this in, as long as we got that straight edge, that's all we care about. And uh, here's a little tech tip for everybody that's using air tools. Um, in the winter months of the year, air tools tend to run real slow and sluggish, so it's very important to always keep them. <laughs> oiled up. Alright, so now what we've done is we went ahead and removed that whole corner of the quarter panel. You can see that I did that and I got a nice straight line here. We'll take my grinder now my little four inch uh, grinding wheel, I'm sorry, two inch roll lock grinding disc with 36 grit on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up. I wanna get all that slag from the cutting wheel off of it. And I also wanna clean this edge for welding. This is ready to go ahead and proceed to use. We're going to take our tape off. And 
then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and line this up, laying it on top of the quarter panel. You can see what I'm doing here, and I'm getting this lined up, this curve right here. I want to get everything lined up, and then before I mark anything, I'm going to go ahead and screw this together. Now that we got that secured on back to the body, you can see where I, uh, I brought it as close as I could into the vehicle itself, trying to line up this section right here. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and fit this piece to match this piece. So we're just going to kind of speculate how this is going to go once we push it in there. And what I'm looking at here, let me get that out of the way. We're going to have to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and speculate that we need to bend this out approximately an inch. So I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to use the edge of the pliers as a vise, you might say, to bend that out. And I'm going to go all the way down with it. And once we get this going, it will go back into place where we want it to go. It'll roll itself into place and then we'll, we'll go ahead and pull it back out and then we'll hammer and dolly it to fit. So we start out with our pliers. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take a hammer and I'm going to hammer this because remember this ridge right here? So I'm going to hammer this into the quarter panel section to fit in there. So we're going to go ahead and take this long reach hammer here and then we're going to start pounding that back into place where it goes. And you can see as we're pounding it, it's starting to fit back into place. So it looks like right here, I'm going to have to go ahead and bend this out just a little bit more. All right, so what I'm going to have to do now, can you go get me the channel lock, them big channel lock pliers in the other room, please? The giant ones. So we went ahead and bent this out and we pushed it in there and we saw that by doing that, uh, it still isn't fitting properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to bend it even farther back, just like this. And this is how you use these panels. You just got to manipulate your way to making them work until they actually fit. Um, it's looking like this piece right here might be a little bit short from the original piece. So once we get that done, we'll see what happens. Because remember, this is just screwed on here and we don't have anything welded. And then now what we'll do, we'll go ahead and change hammers. And manipulate our way into making everything fit right. done here is I went ahead and I removed our quarter panel section that we had to uh, shorten and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my little hand dolly that you see right here I'm going to go ahead and square this up on these edges right here let me get this out of the way again uh, I went ahead and finished the weld job on this little section here that you can't see around the corner but um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and square this up. So I'm going to take this edge right here and I'm going to put it right in the corner just like that. And then I'll go ahead and hammer and dolly it. Get this right here. Now one thing you're going to find out about using these is they aren't going to fit like they're supposed to. So, I'm just letting you know that it's going to take a lot of hammer and a lot of dolly in and a lot of manipulation to get it to where it's supposed to be. 
Uh, I didn't like where this line was right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go farther in and bend it more so I can get it toward that quarter panel. Um, I need some special, I need the pliers. Where did my big pliers go?